Good morning, I'm Mark Allen with Gaper.io, and I'm here today with Vin DiGregorio, our product manager at ePrems. Good afternoon in your case. Vin, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good. Uh, how's the weather there in Boston today? Uh, it's getting chilly, uh, entering October. It's starting to get a little colder now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, we're starting to, uh, today for the first time this year, my, the heat came on in my place. I'm in, I'm in San Francisco, so we're, now we're just starting to hit that period. So, and it, it should start raining here in about three weeks. So uh, it, <laughs> winter is coming. So to start with, can you share a brief background of yourself and your work experience? Yeah, definitely. Um, so my name is Vin. I work at ePrens. Uh, a little bit about my working background. Um, so I'm actually a senior in college at the moment. I go to Babson College at Wellesley, Massachusetts. Um, I'm currently working for a company called ePrens. Uh, we just rebranded. Initially, we were Entrepreneurs Network. We started off as a, um, a LinkedIn group uh, 13 years ago with our founder. And, you know, over the course of time, we saw an opportunity with tons of people. We kind of put our heads together and we're trying to figure out a way that we could, you know, create a, you know, company. Hmm. Very interesting. And since you're in college, what is your major? Yep. So I'm actually at Babson. It is the number one entrepreneurial school in the country. Uh, so I'm studying entrepreneurship and with a concentration of finance. Oh, very interesting. Um, I didn't, I did not know that fact. I would have said Stanford if someone asked me what was the number one, but that, that's good to know. Babson is the number one entrepreneurial school in the country. Yeah. So you, since you're still in college, you probably don't have a lot of experience with remote employment other than what you're doing now at, at ePrims, right? Yeah. And it's been a, I definitely think it's a pretty relevant because, you know, essentially because I have no preconceived notion of what the work life would have been like, um, you know, given, you know, that I have had some, you know, internship roles where I've been, you know, within a team, you know, in a physical location, uh, you know, now, you know, working remotely with an international team, it's been, uh, you know, quite a shift, I would say. Interesting. So does, does ePrens actually have an office in, in the Boston area or have they never had one? So we never had one because we're, so, we're, we're a pretty young startup, I would say, you know, we're about a year old. Um, you know, and we have an international team. There's eight employees on the team, uh, two U.S. based, and the rest are um, all over the world. Wow! And and since you're product manager, where is the um, the CEO, for lack of a better term? The CTO, you said? C CEO, the head the head Tanjo. Oh yeah, so he's in um, he's in Michigan. Oh, okay, so you're the two U.S. employees then? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah. Since you're new to this, I mean, you've only, you've had a little bit of both, both going to the office and going, you know, working remotely. Which one do you prefer so far? Yeah, so I would say that I honestly work, I prefer remotely uh, because I'm, I always envision myself in an entrepreneurial role. And because I'm in an entrepreneur, you know, I'm in an entrepreneurial company that's helping entrepreneurs, you know, I get to kind of have that freedom uh, that I wouldn't per se have if I was in an office. Um, you know, because, you know, I kind of, you know, working at my own pace in a way, right, you know, I get to go for a run or I get to go pick up lunch if I wanted to. I guess you could do the same thing in an office, uh, but it's a little different. It is different. I mean, I've worked in an office and it's tough to run at lunch. Um, yeah. Just because you come back sweaty and unless if they don't have a shower, it's really just not good. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, it's been pretty nice, um, you know, I would say compared to my other jobs where I worked, you know, let's say like nine to five, you know, at a physical location. Yeah, very interesting. And, and but that brings up a different point. Since you're still young and you're still just getting your career, you know, started, um, do you miss the social aspect of being at an office and, you know, seeing the same people every day and going to happy hour on Friday and things like that? Yeah, I de so it's actually funny you mentioned that. Like, I think the social aspect is definitely missing. Uh, one of the biggest things that, you know, when I'm lucky because of you know, just the nature of the company and like what we do is I'm always talking to other, you know, like-minded entrepreneurs, which is, you know, it's fortunate because I am still having that aspect, whether they're employees of the company or if they're, you know, just even members of our community. Uh, so I still feel like I'm getting that social aspect and almost in a way it's, you know, not that it's, I think it's authentic in a way, but, you know, you get to, uh, it's more effective because you get to, you know, schedule a meeting after, you know, a meeting after a meeting from someone who's in, you know, India versus someone who's in, you know, Michigan or someone who's in San Francisco, whatever, right? And it's just, uh, you know, the time efficiency standpoint in terms of how many people you're actually getting to connect with. But I would say the quality of the, you know, actual connection that you get to make is, 
um, you know, it's a little different. Yeah, no, it is. I, I, I agree. I mean, when I was your age, I was, you know, I was part of a group of people that all started at a, a large bank in Buffalo, New York. Um, and, you know, that was part of the whole culture was we were all new to this. We were all fresh out of college and, you know, we all grew up, a bunch of us got married. Actually, that's where I met my wife. So things like that. So, yeah. and you're not quite there yet. So hold off on that. <laughs> So what do you think is the future of remote employment and what do you think can be done differently to make it more effective? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's actually funny because I'm kind of like in this, you know, entrepreneurial role and, you know, I feel like I see a lot of gaps because I'm working remotely, uh, you know, and been working remotely since February, like even prior to, uh, you know, COVID, um, I was working remotely regardless because, you know, obviously I was still in college. Uh, you know, my boss was in uh, Michigan when the rest of the team was all over the world. Um, so one of the gaps that I always see is like this, you know, idea of like information silos, like, you know, communications not being, you know, translated uh, to everyone for the whole team. So there's, you know, there is that lack of communication. Like I can't just go up to someone's desk and say, hey, you know, can you get this done for me by, you know, this time or, hey, we're going to make a change in the system. Do you mind doing this for me? Right. I mean, you can take do a text message or, you know, it's just a little hard and I see a lot of gaps there. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for, you know, especially software companies that are coming out to kind of bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. And that leads us, you know, to my next question. What is the story behind ePrint? What, what is your product offering or you know, what are you going to be offering? Who's your target audience? All those things. Yeah, so uh, ePrint, so like I said, you know, we had a LinkedIn group that started 13 years ago. Uh, the founder, his name is David Wagstaff. And, you know, he kind of nurtured this community. And now today we have 88,000 members, which is pretty significant. It's the largest uh, entrepreneurial network on LinkedIn. Um, and what's amazing about it is that, you know, because we have this base, we already have this pre-existing relationship. So something that's uh, also unique about our group is that every single person that joins our LinkedIn group gets a welcome message from one of the team members. So someone will be welcome to asking, you know, what are they looking for, right? We wanna find out what's the purpose of our community members. Why are they joining, right? They're not just joining for, you know, for the sake of it. They're joining because they're looking for something, whether that's to get clients, whether that's to get information, right? And we wanna be there to step them through the process. So what we did is we created this product line called the Connect Programs. And so on ePrends.com, which is our online community or sister community is what we call it, uh, we created connect programs. So we have three connect programs, which is peer connect. It's peer supporting peers. Then we have mentor connect. So connecting individuals to mentors. And then lastly, we have lead connect, which is uh, connecting people or entrepreneurs to leads, right? And leads can be a variety of things. It could be an investor looking for startups to invest in. It could be a person looking for teams uh, to like people to recruit. And then it could also be someone looking to actually, you know, make a sale. So Great. Very interesting. And do you, I'm, I'm assuming you charge for the membership, right? Yep. So they all have their individual prices. So our Lead Connect program, the one when you're getting introduced to leads, it's eight introductions. So we'll actually, we take a step further. We just use, you know, LinkedIn Navigator to mm -hmm. kind of go through the uh, specifications of, you know, who you, like who you're looking for. But the thing is, because all these people have received um, welcome messages from us or kind of understand us as Entrepreneurs Network or ePrends.com, uh, you know, we'll kind of actually go forward and make that introduction for you. So rather a warm introduction, you know, it, rather than it being a cold outreach, it would be a warm introduction. Very interesting. So that one, yeah, so that one be, it's uh, eight introductions for uh, $250 a month with the three month minimum. And then we have Mentor Connect, which ranges from $169 a month to uh, $480 a month. It really depends on the mentor that you, you know, choose. Uh, right now, we have, you know, mentors all over the world that also have, you know, specific abilities. So people that are, you know, specific in tech, people that are specific in finance, people that are specific in consulting, and so forth. And then we have um, mastermind groups, which is also $250 a month, but it depends on, that's the typical, the standard price. But people usually, uh, depending on the facilitator of the mastermind group, uh, it could range up or down from there. Oh, very interesting. So, and, and does someone have to be uh, on LinkedIn to take part in your? Um... Yeah, no, you, you do not. Uh, it's just the, the only thing, you don't have to uh, be a part of the LinkedIn group. Uh, we are, we do, you know, obviously recommend people to join the LinkedIn group after they join ePrends.com solely, or, you know, a lot of people right now that are coming to our online community will be from our LinkedIn group. Oh, very, very interesting. So, 
you joined about a year ago, but 13 years ago is when it started. Was it was it 100% remote back then too? It sounds like it was. So it was just a LinkedIn group, right? Like, so okay. like, let's just say like 13 years ago, if you started a LinkedIn group, right? And then it just grew. So re- like the one year ago, I would say is like when the founder decided he actually uh, sold it, his consultant business and kind of transitioned into this role to figure out, you know, hey, I have an opportunity, you know, I have a gr- community growing. Uh, just to give you some statistics, we've grown by 25,000 members year to date. So really COVID has kind of been an accelerating for us because people are looking for financial freedom. People are looking more towards entrepreneurship. So that's kind of, you know, it's been a huge shift for us then, you know, uh, I guess paying more attention to it, building a team. You know, we went from, it was me, the, uh, the founder and the CTO, and now we're at eight employees. So growing very rapidly. Wow. So that, well, that brings me to my next question, because the pandemic caused everybody to shift back in March, the whole world. So mm-hmm. obviously that helped you, it, it increased your membership, but did it cause any other roadblocks or challenges that you didn't expect? Yep. Um, yeah, that's a tough question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm trying to think. I don't, I don't necessarily know, honestly. Um, I don't, we didn't really have any roadblocks per se. Um, yeah, at, the only thing I would say that it was an accelerant for, you know, people coming on board, because I think more people were losing their jobs and, you know, we're dealing with more so uh, smaller companies, I would say. So we actually have a, you know, a variety. We work with everyone is what we say. We do business with everyone. So, you know, because we can, you know, obviously there's sponsorship opportunities with an 88,000 member community, but we also have, you know, more of our connect programs are tailored to, uh, you know, let's say like uh, five to 10 person employee uh, startup, uh, because those are the people that are really looking to take their business off and kind of in that growth phase. Um, So that's really where we're targeting, I would say, for our connect programs. Hmm, Interesting. So it it sounds like it, it, it accelerated your growth and it sounds like you, you guys were ready for it, right? So yeah, yeah I mean, I, <laughs> I guess it's a good problem to have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in a startup, the thing is, you know, it, you're always continuously changing the programs and the product and, you know, especially because we're trying to figure out what's the most value. So um, I guess I didn't mention this. So we are a purpose-driven company, right? Our goal is to help make a meaningful difference for a hundred thousand entrepreneurs, right? And the number isn't the big deal, right? We already have 88,000 members, um, but the real issue is making the meaningful difference, right? And as a product manager, my job is to make sure that we're actually providing significant value for 100,000 people. And how do you do that, right? It's not, I wouldn't say it's an easy challenge. Right, well, especially with only eight employees. I mean, that's that's, that's, that's 12,500 employees or members (laughs) per employee. That's a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we, you know, as, as we continue to go, right, we're still uh, experiencing this like a uh, growth stage, uh, but I perceive in the future, right, we're going to continue to onboard new members and just continue to grow and expand as a, you know, entrepreneurial organization. Very interesting. So, and that, that brings me to my, my last question is there's companies like Gaper that help develop, um, build and scale products, especially for startups. And you deal with a lot of startups. So, how important do you think that's going to be for, for startups going forward to be able to get, you know, good technical help um, and in a hurry and it doesn't really matter where it comes from? Yeah. Sorry, can, can you repeat it? Like the sure. question. Yeah. How, how important do you think, you know, what we do is remote, you know, we outsource IT services, right? In yeah. development services. How important do you think that is for these startups that you mentor and help going forward? Yeah. No, I, I think it's hugely important, right? I think a lot of people, uh, you know, that haven't been familiar with the you kind of like this tech, um, you know, experience overall, people are still kind of adapting and shifting into this new space, uh, especially for startups, right? Like I heard a lot of people trying to figure out, you know, people even simply as like a local mom and pop shop, right? Trying to set up a website, right? But, you know, these more little, I would say a little, um, you know, some of the startups that I'm dealing with are really looking to kind of, you know, expand their web presence and kind of their products overall. So I would say it's, it's hugely important. And do you, something like that, let's just use that as an example. Do you, do you say, hey, we have people that have done that over here, or do you actually have that expertise in-house yourself? Like web, you know, enhancing your web presence or building a website? Yeah, so we actually don't do that, right? So we're, we're really just a, we're honestly a connection platform. Right. If you want to look at us at like like as Fiverr or Upwork in a way, right? We're really building. We're an entrepreneurial organization or community, 
right? We're helping people connect more so on an education and knowledge basis rather than actually uh, conducting the services. So for example, like for like a mentor connect program, if someone's just starting a startup and let's say they're, you know, they're not financially savvy and they're asking questions to a mentor, you know, uh, you know, this is my financial model, but I'm not sure if this is the, you know, correct way to go, right? This is, you know, stuff like that. It's more so more uh, education and knowledge basis. Uh, if they decide to have a, uh, like a further engagement, then they can do that. Uh, mm -hmm. But we're really just to, you know, put peers to, together so they can support one another. Oh, very interesting. So yeah, the, it's kind of like LinkedIn on steroids, it sounds like. Would you agree? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and essentially, like, that's what it is. I would say it's like a more niche LinkedIn, uh, but it's, you know, mainly for entrepreneurs looking, you know, working for themselves, kind of like self-employed people really expanding their business. Hmm, very interesting. Well, well, then I want to thank you for your time today. Um, I wish you luck. I mean, you're you're juggling both school and work. That's got to be tough, right? Yeah, it's a little tough. And, you know, uh, remote learning is not very easy, as you can imagine. <laughs> yes, and, I can imagine. and do you plan, are you going to graduate, you think, in, uh, in 2021? So, yeah, so I, I've been fortunate that I'll actually graduate this December because um, I had some extra credit. So I was like, I'll just finish up. Uh, this semester, so I don't have to, you know, deal with both, essentially. Yeah, and then you can just be a full-time employee. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you should take a month off and just go somewhere fun for, for a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Something. I was thinking about that, but I don't know how, how much traveling you can do with COVID around. Well, there's got to be some place you can go sit on an island somewhere <laughs> where it's warm <laughs> in January. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, thank you again for your time, and and good luck to you, and have a great day. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Take care. Bye.